Hello, my dear friend, and welcome one more time to another episode of the series, The Letter of the Apostle Paul to the Romans. I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church Odessa, and I would like to invite you to go to the website vchurch.us. There you will be able to connect with the podcast if you want to listen to previous episodes, or if you want to watch the previous episodes, you can go to the Facebook page, Victory Church Odessa, or the YouTube channel, or the Vimeo channel. It is an honor for me that you are investing time with this study. Thank you so much for doing it. Well, this beautiful time that we are going to spend together reading God's Word is going to be fantastic. This is a beautiful message the Lord gave me, reflecting about this passage. So we read from the easy to read version in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Romans chapter 11. And we are going to read from the verses 9 and 10 today. And please, Lord, guide us through this study. Are you ready? And we read. And David says, says, Let those people be caught and trapped at their own feasts. Let them fall and be punished. Let their eyes be closed so that they cannot see. And let them be troubled forever. Wow. Sometimes we pray certain prayers and later we say, I don't know why did I pray that way. <laughs> you know what is interesting, especially when it's about um, having trouble with certain people, is that your emotions are always there. And although we deeply want to be absolutely forgiving and also loving, regardless what others do, uh, sometimes it's hard to just let it go that quickly. David, as you know, he was a servant of God. He wrote many Psalms. And there you go. There is the evidence of all his feelings. There are Psalms, my friends, where, wow, he said certain things. Like this particular section that we just read, you know. In many occasions, he was being uh, the victim. Most of the time was a an innocent victim, not always, but most of the time. And when he was under those attacks, he asked the Lord to kill their enemies. And you wonder, right, how can you put those things together? Because the Lord wants us to be forgiving and loving, trusting in Him. And you read passages like this when you say, David wants people to die? I don't get it. Well, the thing is, as humans, it is impossible to detach, detach our emotions entirely and say in a very biblical way, you know, everything is God's will. May the Lord protect us and do whatever He thinks is best for us and we just accept His will. You know, it sounds poetic, it sounds very spiritual, very biblical, but we cannot do that all the time. Can you? Because I can't. Now, after we say what we say because of the emotions we have, we think, I don't think that was good, <laughs> right? We have regrets about certain things that we say, certain wishes we have, or thoughts we have about people that affected us. The interesting thing, speaking about David, is that David so lived one experience, very drastic experience, with uh, somebody that attacked him. He was his own son. David was king, and one of the sons fought against him, rebelled against the king. Well, you know what? The army, David's army, they have specific instructions to protect the king and the kingdom. So what they did was they proceeded defending King David. And uh, when David knew about the death of his son, it was dramatic. Well, we know David was very dramatic, right? But 
who will not feel that way? First of all, imagine you are the owner of a company and suddenly your, your own son is trying to take your company out of your control and he wants to be the new CEO and leave you with nothing. What in the world is that? So you are not happy with that. And then you find out that your son died during all this process. How would you feel? But now imagine if you find out that he died because people that work for you, protected you, defended you. So this guy ended up in a bad position because fought against you. Now, if you think about it, your first thought was, I, I need to be defended. I'm, I need to protect myself. David was like that. And when the time came that his commanders, his officers came and, and told him, your son is dead. And David very dramatically went, you know, and cry. And he made one of those scenes. He was honest. You know, he, it was his son, of course. Well, guess what happened to the officials? The officials were pretty upset. And they were thinking, you serious? You're crying for a guy who was against you, who wanted to kill you in the first place? What's wrong with you? It doesn't make sense, right? But the truth is, our emotions are all the time right there. And you know what? Sometimes God will go with our emotions. Sometimes God goes with his emotions. And when it's about people that are against, against the Lord, don't you think, oh, it's okay. The Lord is so forgiving. He's not, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I have said to you before, the Lord, it does, it, he is not playing games with Satan and the darkness. And all those demons, you know, boom, out, out and die. And their destiny is death. Eternal death in the lake of fire. So don't get confused with the mercy of God thinking, you know, the Lord is going to forgive everybody. And, you know, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. There are principles, laws, prophecies. The question, the most important question right now is this. Are you okay with God? Have you come clean with the Lord? Are you in good terms with the Almighty? That's the question, my friend. But what about people? What about this? Forget about the others, all right? Let's talk about you and your relationship with God. Are you in good terms with the Lord? Do you realize that he is the king of the universe, the master, the master of all galaxies, the owner of this life? Are you aware that he can just reject you and say, you are not coming into my kingdom, go to the darkness and live there forever? And go to hell? Really? I thought that all, all about God is love and forgiveness. Yes, of course. For him, it's all about love and forgiveness. That's why he sent his son, Jesus. But he paid the price for your salvation to give you eternal life. And you just don't want to value and treasure and cherish the Lord Jesus? What do you think the Lord God is going to say? It's okay. Don't worry. You know, my son died, but it's all right. You can just come into the kingdom no matter what. You're so cute. You're so cute. No, my friend. Anyone who just thinks that because they are cute, they are going to come to heaven. They are not cute. They are dumb. <laughs> Don't be dumb. Don't be naive. Reason with God. He calls us to reason with Him. He knows what we have done. The Lord knows what you have done. You know what you have done. Repent, my friend. There are emotions in the kingdom of God too. There is justice. 
There is repenting. If you have that repenting heart, this is the time. Surrender and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore. That's the right emotion. With a humble heart, in the presence of God, you receive his forgiveness. Everything is going to be all right for you. But what about the rest, you say? What if we fix your situation first? But I want to know. I, I will tell you. But what if we fix your situation first? Okay. How do we fix my situation? I already told you. Repentance. Surrender to the authority of God and say, Forgive me, Lord. I want to go to heaven. I don't want you to be mad at me, Lord. You do that. You will see the emotion of peace and forgiveness coming right away in your heart. Because the Lord can do that and will do that all day long with anybody. And that's the answer for what about the rest? The Lord will do the same with one condition. Humility. Repentance. No humility. No repentance. No heaven. Is that what you want? I don't think so. Humility, repentance, heaven. The price was already paid. Tell that to your friends then. You are concerned for the rest? That's your job now. Once you are okay with God, you have peace with God, you are in good terms with the good Lord, now your job is to go and tell others. That's what I am doing. I care so much that I devote my life to do, to do this. I'm not asking you to become a preacher. I'm asking you to reach out to those who you really care and tell them your testimony, how you feel about God now. You can do that. Okay, enough is enough with this conversation. Go and do it, okay? Bye.